Hello, my name is Tolor Plashko from MCAT Bulgaria and today we will continue our lessons about designing a gear reducer with Inventor. Uh, today I will show you how to uh, design the spur gears between the two shafts. In, le in lesson number 5 we have uh, created uh, the first shaft uh, and uh, you you can see how uh, how we made uh, we made it uh, i created uh, also the second one now you can see its parts i uh, right click on it it's called uh, shaft 2 and these are uh, its parts you can uh, pause now uh, the the lesson and you can uh, uh, copy this uh, uh, these uh, steps every step and you can also create uh, the second shaft. Uh, I uh, I create uh, it also because uh, I created previously because uh, you uh, saw in the last lesson how that was made. Uh, the bearings were um, uh, outer uh, diameter 80, inner diameter 40, and the width w it was uh, is uh, 70. So uh, I think that's uh, enough information for creating the second shaft. You saw the uh, you saw the, the its dimensions. It's all, it's all, uh, its parts are only cylindrical. Uh, you can uh, <coughs> create it, I think, uh, without any problem. Uh, of course, uh, you can also always uh, get the results for after creating. Uh, something in the design uh, with the design accelerator so these shafts uh, are uh, uh, connected uh, with the bearings they can rotate you cannot see it very well but they can rotate uh, you can use uh, uh, the insert constraint to put them on to exact place and now we will uh, start uh, creating the spur gear uh, there are also two other uh, gears that you can create with Inventor. Okay, I will create the spur gear. The first thing you have to do uh, is to select the two shafts and especially the parts that uh, where the um, the gear will will we will it will stay. So these are the two parts. Uh, and uh, I don't know if you can see, but uh, there is a distance, a cent center distance between these two uh, gears, and it is, uh, and that distance is uh, 154. And uh, I, I take it, of course, uh, I took it from the uh, geometry itself. Next thing is to uh, show to select uh, the plane from which these gears will will start uh, it's uh, absolutely enough to select just one of them and of course the second one will be uh, centered by the first you, the, by the one you have uh, selected all right so uh, the next thing let's it's the face width of uh, these uh, gears as you know, uh, my dimensions from the DWG file are not much, uh, are not very correct. So this dimension is, uh, let's say, 46, and this one here, the bigger one, uh, the bigger one, uh, maybe with less width, width. Let me see, 40. Let's say 40. Uh, as you know, you can always go back and uh, change some of these uh, par parameters. Okay, so the first one is uh, 46 or 45, let's say 45, and as you can see, uh, it uh, changed. Of course, you can drag it also. Save again 45, and the second one was 14. Okay, so uh, that's a, a preview of uh, what will be created after we press OK. <clears throat> okay, the next thing we will do, we will, uh, let me just open some of the window, parts of the window that is not shown. These are the results of our calculation. Of course, previously, before uh, creating uh, a gear, 
it's uh, uh, absolutely absolutely obligate, obligatory to uh, calculate it calculated it I changed the module I made it four uh, then uh, I'll, I'll just uh, uh, tell that uh, you can um, let's say uh, uh, you can tell inventor to inventor what you want to calculate as I told you I want to calculate the module and the number of teeth that's why I cannot change them uh, uh, or I can uh, only the number of teeth center of distance total unit correction means that uh, we can uh, something like uh, a checking uh, operation let's say we just stay total unit correction like as you can see you can change everything I will just leave it and module when you press module you cannot change it alright I will just say module and number of teeth a desired gear, gear ratio that, that was the thing I changed the helix angle you can always also uh, uh, change that you can press preview that's the results as you uh, that's the results of the uh, teeth you can uh, even you can even uh, create uh, to see an animation of it so that's how uh, the that's how the uh, teeth of the two gears will connect each other the pinion is the one that will uh, uh, will be can be used for creating the gears the rack mesh the rack mesh is the thing is the instrument that is used for creating uh, these teeth okay that just for our information there is also always a second tab in the, the design accelerator uh, panel where, where you can uh, additionally calculate uh, your gears uh, you can insert the desired power desired speed desired torque and uh, stuff like this uh, lots of factors coefficients lots of things you lots of things you can uh, uh, you can uh, uh, determine from here of course you you can uh, choose for for uh, you can choose the material for the gears and other of coefficients, parameters, as there are many. All right, I will create. I will create this uh, gear. That's uh, the the spur gear is an assembly, of course, and it's it is uh, it consists of spur gear one and spur gear two. So that's our uh, assembly, spur gear assembly. As you can see, it's movable. Uh, of course, right now it's not connected. It is not connected to the shafts. We will do that later in this lesson. But yeah, as you can see, it's uh, it can rotate over uh, over the shafts. Now to connect the gears with uh, to the shaft, I will use the key command. Key is the is the detail that is that connects the, these two uh, elements. Now I don't know the. Uh, dimensions of this key uh, but maybe you know that uh, the dimension uh, of uh, the key is based on the uh, the shaft that uh, this key is on so here is the window I will uh, choose this uh, I will choose this type of uh, key let's say ISO 2491A then of course uh, I will create the key, the, sh the, the shaft groove and the hub groove. Uh, so first I will, I will show where, where will, uh, the, this key will be. Let's, of course it will be right here on this place of the shaft. Next thing I will, I will show from where to start this, uh, <coughs> from where to start uh, this, uh, uh, shaft groove from here and uh, <clears throat> right now the next thing the next thing I will uh, show you can see it uh, I will create the hub groove it's not a gear groove or something like this because uh, uh, it's not always uh, uh, need to, to 
it's not obligatory to have gear uh, around the shaft. So uh, that's uh, how it's made. First, I will show. Uh, I will show. I will select the uh, two sides. Then I will select a cylindrical part of this uh, gear. And as you can see, with the red, uh, with the red lines, it's the uh, it's this groove that will be uh, uh, cut. It will be cut from uh, the uh, from the uh, our gear. As you can see, it's the dimensions of the of the key is uh, 14, 6 and 36. I press OK. Of course, another uh, uh, sub another sub assembly. And uh, our I will double click on the big the big, on the big um, gear. And as you can see, it is well cut. Well cut it between uh, well cut between uh, it's between the gear and the shaft, and of course the shaft is also cut very, very, uh, very cool looking. Of course, you can always click with the right, right button of your mouse and and select Edit using Design Accelerator. Now, and using Design Accelerator. Now, uh, you can. Uh, Let's say you can uh, positioning exactly the place of uh, 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 the shaft. The the key you can uh, place it at an exact uh, play uh, on an exact uh, uh, on its exact place. Uh, you you have to double click on the one of the uh, one of the uh, grips. With the one of the grips, you can uh, change the uh, length of the key, and yeah, with the other one, you can uh, change its position. Okay, so now you cannot see it very well on uh, on this video, but uh, right now the second shaft it's uh, it's rotating. If you want now, if you want to export the tool shape. It's very easy. You just have to right click on one of the gears, export and click export tool shape. Then select what to export, the pinion or the gear. Let's say the pinion. Okay. And as you can see there is a part that it looks like a little bit like a gear. You just have to extrude cut it, extrude cut it. Okay. So here is how it looks, and just use a circular pattern of this extrude cut around this width 19. That's the little one. The pinion is the little little gear, and there it is, the gear, just like that. All right. So um, next thing I will show is that. Uh, Although we created like this gear, some sort of a standard part, some sort, we can always edit it. Just double click on it, then you, you will enter in the assembly of the two gears. Double click again on the bigger one, and you, as you can see, this is a normal part. You can uh, use you can use every command for a uh, uh, Editing and creating geometry. I will not create the same cuts that uh, was in the uh, were in the um, uh, the drawing, but something like this. I would just after all, it's just I would just show that uh, this gear is editable. I will just cut extrude it right like this, and I will use again circular pattern, of course. Let's say I will create a chamfer before that. Okay, again, okay, circular pattern command. I will select the extrude and the chamfer. Then for rotation axis, I will use, let's say, this part just to receive uh, an axis. 
and let's say 8. Alright, so return to top, and as you can see, this is this is our gear. Of course, you can create a key to the another um, to the other gear. You can uh, add, uh, of course, you can uh, create uh, more complex cuts in the bigger one. That's that's your choice. So that's for uh, for today's lesson. As you can see, it's very easy to uh, create spur gears in Inventor. You can always go back, click Edit using Design with the right click of your mouse, uh, Edit using uh, uh, Design Accelerator, and you can change everything. And it will be updated to the new mm, will be updated uh, to the new. Uh, uh, the parameters. Of course, this gear to be a normal gear must have uh, must uh, have uh, a second gear. This one here, you can also create it, create it. But I will not create it in these lessons. After all, these lessons are only for uh, uh, you to understand how to work with the inventor. So the next time we will uh, finish our lower part of the gear. A few holes. Uh, we will connect it with. Uh, we will connect uh, the lower part with the upper part. I will create the upper part next time, uh, and I will create the holes between them. And I will show you how to create a bolted connection between them with just one or two clicks. All right, that's enough for today's lesson. If you have questions, you can always uh, ask us by email or phone us or call us. It's not. Uh, we will gladly help you.